Well, hi there, friends. Uh, welcome back to Little Lab at Home with the Museum of Life and Science. Um, I'm Peregrine, and we have our Catalyst Volunteer Care Line moderating for us today. Um, as always, we hope you will all help lead our program with your questions and thoughts and ideas uh, in the chat box. So uh, today in Lab at Home, we're talking about a very important <clears throat> uh, body process. This is something that all of us do, at least I hope. Uh, it's something you have done today. It's something I am doing right now. It's breathing. So I always like to take, take a second and breathe in. So everybody breathe in with me. And then exhale. I love breathing. Breathing's the thing I like to do. Tell me what you guys know about breathing. Is it something, is it something we have to do? Is it something we always do? Do we do it the same way all the time? What do you think? Do we breathe at different speeds sometimes? Do we know what we use to breathe? Tell me in the chat, anything you know about breathing or maybe even just some words associated with breathing? What do you think? Ooh, we have that we use our lungs to breathe. Oh yeah, we definitely use our lungs to breathe. Anything else? What do you think? What else? We use our lungs to breathe. We definitely need to use our mouths to breathe or we can use our nose. Oh, this is a great addition. One of my friends said um, that you breathe in O2 or oxygen and you breathe out CO2 or carbon dioxide. You guys are great, that's perfect. We have another friend adding that diaphragm is a very important part of breathing. Yes, it is. And we're gonna be doing an experiment um, that kind of uses a sort of diaphragm. That's perfect. Um, and we have another friend saying that for breathing, um, we need our lungs and our heart. It's true, the heart is a big part of breathing, right? Because our body needs something. We had um, one of our friends already said that our body needs oxygen and it needs oxygen all over. Now, um, if I'm breathing in through my mouth or through my nose, I'm breathing in oxygen. Is my oxygen just going all the way through my body? Like, am I just breathing in and inflating like a balloon? What do you think? If I'm breathing in, is my body just inflating like that? Or does my body use something else? to carry the oxygen, right, right. My, my friend is saying, uh, no, we don't just inflate like a balloon. The oxygen gets moved through our entire bodies by our blood. So our heart pumps our blood. That's, how our, that's why our heart is an important part of breathing as well. And the oxygen that our, our heart pumps through our blood, uh, throughout our bodies, comes from the air around us that we need to breathe in through our lungs. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that process of breathing. So we know that breathing starts in the mouth or the nose. Do you guys usually use your mouth or your nose to breathe? What do you think? I think it depends. A lot of times when I'm wearing my mask, I'll, I'll breathe more through my mouth. We have a friend saying more through their nose. Yeah, I think I tend to do more through my nose, but sometimes when I'm sleeping, I think probably I, I breathe more through my mouth. Uh, so when you breathe, you either uh, use your nose or your mouth to let in the air. We have a special tube where the just air and not food goes down and it leads to what? What does our trachea lead to? It goes all the way down like this. Yeah, and it starts to branch off to your lungs. Exactly. I was going to do um, a quick little drawing for us so we can start thinking about it. When I'm thinking about what the lungs look like, I often think about um, like a tree, right? And our trachea is sort of like the trunk. So I'm gonna start drawing a tree. I'm gonna draw the trunk like this. And then I'm going to draw the main branches, kind of like that. I'm drawing it backwards, so bear with me. We kind of have our main branches and then our branches start to branch off a little more, right? And then our branches branch off 
a little more than that. Right? So our branches have branches which have branches. <laughs> we have our main tube, right? That kind of goes out to be our bronchial tubes. And then our bronchial tubes become our bronchi or our bronchus tubes. Sounds pretty similar, but a slightly different thing. And then those bronchus tubes become our brachials. And then at the very end of our brachials, we have something that um, they're just like these little sacs. And they're called uh, the velus. So it kind of, to me, it looks like a tree with almost like some little flowers on the end. Right? But of course, in our bodies, it's shaped more this way. So the air comes in through this main tube, it branches out, and the air, right, our, this oxygen, this gas, gets moved through these different tubes that become smaller and smaller until they get to these, um, these alveoli, the alveoluses, right? And then they can pass through, the oxygen can pass through into the blood. From there, the blood takes it all around our body and it brings back carbon dioxide, right? Because our body's used up all the oxygen, puts, uh, puts back carbon dioxide, and then uh, the carbon dioxide kind of does the opposite thing. It goes back through, and then we exhale it. So it's a pretty good system, right? Exhaling and inhaling. We know a little bit how it goes uh, kind of through these different kinds of tubes into our blood and back again, but how exactly does inhaling work, right? This is, this is something that I think about because we do breathing really easily, right? We do it kind of without thinking. It's something that just part of our brain controls. Um, we do it while we're sleeping. We don't do it consciously most of the time. But what is actually happening to get air inside of our body, right? Because if I have a balloon like this and I wanna blow it up, <laughs> I just blow through the neck of it, the opening of it, to get the air inside. But the air all around us, is it blowing into our mouth? What do you think? I think the air is just kind of, it's just kind of there. Sometimes maybe the wind is blowing, but the air all around us is just, is just there. And we're the ones who have to get that oxygen inside of our bodies to our lungs to pass out um, through those different bronchial tubes. And to do it, we use a really special muscle. I think our friend was even telling us about the muscle that we use, our diaphragm. So we're gonna do an experiment in just a second that kind of um, will serve as a model to help us see how the diaphragm helps inflate our lungs with air right? Because the air doesn't just blow into us. We have to use this muscle to create a vacuum inside of our bodies to pull the air in. We're going to talk about that in just a second, but let's get to the experiment part. So what you're going to need uh, for this uh, experiment is you will need some kind of bottle. Um, I have got a, this is I think like a one liter bottle. You can also use a um, like a little plastic water bottle. You can use ones of different size. You can use a two liter. I'm going to use this one liter here. I've also got a balloon, which you have all seen by now. I also have some scissors. There we go. I've got some tape, some masking tape. I have some uh, plastic wrap right here. And I've got a paper towel. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of create our own lung inside of our body cavity. And to do that, I'm going to go to experiment cam really fast. So let's switch to experiment cam so you can see what I'm doing. Our first step for creating our kind of body and lung here is we need to kind of create the body. So what I want you to do is we want to start cutting um, pretty far down. We just want to cut the bottom of our bottle off. And it's a, it can be a little hard to start off, right? A lot of times what I'll do is I'll start off kind of pushing down like that to make a little hole. Sometimes I also use a push pin to get me started. 
right? That just kind of helps me create a hole to start with. There we go. And once I've created that hole, it's easier for me to fit my scissors inside and start cutting. All right. I'm going to start cutting my bottle. Um, now I'm leaving most of my bottle here. I'm just kind of cutting the bottom off. Um, it doesn't matter if it's, it's okay if it's too long. We just don't want it to be too short. So always err on the side of giving yourself a little bit more. I'm going to start cutting my bottle now. And it doesn't matter if your cutting is absolutely perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just going to cut the bottom of our bottle off. Ours might be a look, little crooked, or at least mine might be. But I can always fix it later. And the experiment doesn't need us to have it be totally perfect. There we go. I've cut the bottom off of my bottle. You can see it's not perfect. <laughs> I'll go ahead and trim my bottle up a little bit. I know that sometimes this part can take a little longer for you guys. So let me know when you guys are ready for the next step. I'll give you just a minute here. There we go. Trimmed up a little bit. Perfect. So my bottle, not a totally completely level uh, bottle here. But this is what I want. This is this is what I want as a bottle with this its little neck up here, and I want its uh, the bottom to be cut off so that I can um, use this in here to be my body cavity. So when I say body cavity, I mean your torso. So your torso, right, has skin on the outside. It's got muscle. It's got fat. It's got um, our bones and it's got all of our organs or many of our organs inside of it, including our lungs. But the case, right, we call our body cavity, right? The bowl where all of our organs are. This is our torso. We can even pretend this is our neck, this is our shoulders, this is our, uh, our sides like this. This is gonna be our, our torso and we're going to put a lung in it. Now we can put two lungs in it, right? Because most people have two lungs. Uh, it's definitely helpful to have two lungs, um, but we're gonna start with just one. And there's a reason for that. The, the reason is that we want to create a kind of sealed environment in here. And it can be a little bit harder to do that um, if we're trying to create two different tubes coming down. Um, so you can always on your own, you can always uh, kind of make another tube to be your other lung, but we're going to start by just having one lung. So what do you think? You guys about ready to move on? I think I'll show you what we're going to do next. So we have our body cavity and we're going to put our lung inside of our body cavity, right? Now our balloon is what's going to serve as our lung because it's stretchy, it's good at um, inflating with air, just like our lungs are, right? But we're going to need a tube for the air to get to our lungs. That's where our straw comes in. So what we're going to do now is we're going to attach our straw and our balloon together. So you can see I'm not sticking it all the way down here. I don't think I need to stick it all the way down. Um, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my tape to wrap around my balloon so that it creates a seal, right? So that my straw is sealed inside of my balloon. No air can get inside or outside except through the straw. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Get some of my masking tape. I'm going to wrap it around like that. And all I'm doing is just kind of pulling it so that it creates a seal. And I'll say it doesn't have to be a, a totally, uh, completely airtight seal, but just as best as we can, right? So that only air uh, gets through the straw. All right, I'm going to try mine out. This is how you can test to see if you've got a pretty good seal going on. I'm going to blow into this straw here and see if it inflates my balloon. Ready? 
Aha, all right. So I've got a pretty good seal going there. What about you guys? How's it going on your end? If you're doing the experiment with us, are you able to uh, seal your balloon to your straw? So I've got mine here. And I'm almost ready to put it inside of my body cavity. So the step that we're going to do next, right, we want our lung to be inside of our body cavity like this, but we want to be able to seal it from the top. And this is the, the slightly tricky part here, the part that might take a little bit of, uh, may take a little, little bit of tinkering to make sure that we can get it sealed. Right? It can't just be sitting like this because then air could get through this hole in the neck and that's not how our bodies work, right? Um, so what we're going to do is uh, put something on the neck of the bottle to help us make a seal with our tape. So I'm gonna take a paper towel like this. I don't need the whole thing. I'm just gonna cut a little square like this. Right, I'm just gonna create a little square and I'm gonna tape it around the top of the bottle like this. What this is gonna do is um, it's gonna allow me to poke my straw through here um, while keeping my straw inside of the bottle. So what I'm gonna do is start to tape around uh, the opening of my bottle so that I can poke my straw through here. Sort of like the, uh, the lid on a cup if you've ever uh, gotten a cup with a lid that you stick your straw through. I'm going to tape this on here. Like that. Just a little bit more I need to put in there. There we go. So you can see that I've taped a little bit of paper towel um, to kind of to the outside of my, of my bottle's neck. Now, I want to uh, carefully poke my straw up through the paper towel piece right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna poke my straw up through here so that my straw has a way out. I'm just very carefully kind of twisting it. Oh, there we go. I pushed it through. And you can see mine's not perfectly centered, right? But it gives me a place to start uh, taping this over now, right? So we've got a nice start with the paper towel, right? Uh, toward starting to cover the neck of our bottle. But now that we've got our straw through, I want us to tape around where the paper towel is so that our straw will stay in place and so that we create a seal because the air can go through our paper towel. So I'm just gonna go like this. And I'm making sure that I have a little bit of room uh, inside for my balloon like this, right? I want it to have maybe an inch or so from the bottom if possible, because we have one last thing to add to the bottom. So I put a piece of tape over it like that. Now I'm gonna put a piece of tape over the other side. And this is kind of hard to do when there's no paper towel there, which is the reason why I recommended using that paper towel. But in the end, it gets all covered up. See, here's what I have. I have a piece of tape covering over here and a piece of tape covering over here. So it creates a pretty good seal around uh, my my pretend trachea here. So I'm going to, maybe I'll just do one more piece just for fun. Just so it creates a really good seal. Because the only air I want getting in through here is gonna go through the straw, right? If we wanna think about it in terms of our body, we don't want our bodies to blow up like a balloon. We want the air to go through our trachea and into our lungs so the oxygen can get to our blood, right? So right now what we have is our main tube here, our main air tube here. We have a pretty well sealed up neck of the bottle. 
and we've got our lung in here like this, we need one more thing in order to show uh, how our bodies breathe. We need what one of my friends mentioned earlier, a diaphragm. So in our bodies, the diaphragm is a really strong muscle and when it is relaxed, it's sort of a dome shape, right? So it's kind of a dome shape inside of our bodies. And when we breathe in, that dome shape kind of flattens out. So when we are breathing in, our diaphragm flattens out and that decreases the pressure in our bodies to fill up our lungs. We'll talk about that again in just a second, but let's get to making our own diaphragm on our model. So I've got a big sheet of plastic wrap here. We don't need it to be super large, just big enough to cover the end of our bottle. Snip that here, just so I don't have so much extra. If any of you guys are following along at home, let me know how you're doing. I can definitely re-explain a step if you need me to. I know this is kind of an interesting construction that we're building here. Okay, so right now I've got um, a piece of plastic wrap that's big enough to cover the bottom of my bottle. What I wanna do now is I want to tape the, uh, this plastic wrap onto the bottle to create a seal. Now, maybe your guys' is, oh, mine is pretty good. I was gonna say my plastic wrap starts to stick to my bottle a little bit, right? And now I wanna create a really good seal by wrapping some tape around it. So one more thing before I start to seal mine, we said when it's relaxed, it's sort of a dome shape. So I'm gonna kind of use my fist to create a dome, right? Almost like a half circle like this. So it can be kind of like a real diaphragm, right? So it's kind of pushed in, it's not completely flat. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is use some tape to tape my uh, diaphragm onto my body cavity. Now we're almost done. We have one last step and then we'll be ready to test it. All right, there we go. I'm just wrapping it around here. It doesn't have to look perfect. Pull this open like that. All right. Okay, so now I have this, um, I have our diaphragm is attached here. My very last step to allow me to test this is um, because this is not a real body and it's a model, we have to find a way to move this diaphragm. Now we can kind of push it a little bit, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of create um, almost like a handle. And this is how we're gonna do that. We're gonna take a piece of tape and we're gonna fold it like this. I don't even know what shape you would call this. Almost like a wave shape. Basically, you want to create it so there's a little tab that sticks to itself like this and then two sticky ends up at the top. So here's what I've got. This is my little handle, my little pull tab. I'm gonna take the two sticky ends of my pull tab and I'm going to push them onto the bottom of my diaphragm, like a T. That's a great way to, <laughs> that is a very good way to describe it. Yes, it's kind of a T shape, there we go. So we have a T shaped pull tab and what that will let us do is push and pull our diaphragm. So right now we've got our body cavity, that's the bottle. We've got our breathing tube, our trachea here, that's our straw that goes through the neck and uh, it attaches to our lung, which is our balloon. And we have our plastic wrap is our, is our diaphragm, right? It's our diaphragm that will help us breathe. So in order to test this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this tab and we're going to gently start to push and pull it and see what we observe. 
So I'm doing mine. What do you all see happening? What do you think? What do you observe with my balloon lung here? I'll show it to you from a different angle too. When I am pulling at the diaphragm, right, it's pulling air in through, the, uh, through my straw. I might even go back to face cam for this one so you can see the whole thing happen. So you have your whole construction here. When you're pulling on this diaphragm, it inflates the balloon. So you can see mine isn't going, becoming really huge and then becoming super shriveled, right? It's not, um, it's not pushing that much air in and out of it, right? But you can still see, oh, maybe from this side, you can see it better. That when I pull at that diaphragm, when it starts to flatten out like that, it decreases the pressure inside of the body cavity, which means that all the air out here gets kind of almost sucked inside. It creates a vacuum when I pull it like this, right? And the air rushes to fill that vacuum and it fills the balloon, my lung, with air like this. And then when I push it up, right? Or in our bodies, it would be like relaxing our diaphragm. It increases the pressure again, um, which means that the air kind of gets pushed back out inside of our bodies, what it's doing is pulling in oxygen. The oxygen is going through all of our different bronchial tubes and through our alveoli and getting through our blood, circulating through our entire body. And that's taking all of the carbon dioxide and then it is pushing it back out through the same place it came in. What do you think, friends? If any of you at home were trying it out, were you able to make your working lung? I've got my lung here. I think that there's always different ways to tinker with it, to mess with it, to see if you can get it to, um, you know, kind of work even better than it currently works. Like what I might do is try to pull my straw up a little bit just so that I can see it a little bit better. I think I might even um, have a bigger piece of plastic wrap that's a little more pushed in so that I have even more of a diaphragm to push air in and out of this lung. But either way, oh, there we go. That helps us see it pretty well. We've got a model that works almost like our real lungs work. So this is one of my favorite experiments to do because it seems so strange to me that my body creates a vacuum in order to breathe. That inside of my body cavity where all of my organs are, it creates a vacuum which pulls in the air. Um, and then when I relax my diaphragm again, it changes the air pressure, uh, which means that the air comes out. So it's all about changes in pressure that help us breathe. All right, my friends, that is all the time we have for today. I wanna thank you so much for joining us to make a working lung today. I have really enjoyed doing it with you all. Um, man, look, it's really working now. I think I've got the hang of it. I hope that you'll continue to mess around with your lung model to uh, see if you can make it work, see if you can attach another lung to it. I would love to see how that works. Um, oh, wait, we have one last question. <laughs> we have uh, someone asking, can you blow into it? I can blow into it, ready? <laughs> so I can blow into it. <laughs> and then it really, uh, expands the balloon. <laughs> so this would, I guess, be like almost if you were on oxygen and you weren't able to uh, kind of change your diaphragm, you, you weren't able to tighten or relax your diaphragm, so you needed air pushed into you. But if you're, if you're like me and you just have the air around you in a room and you need to inhale, you use your diaphragm to help you. Oh, this is an interesting idea. Caroline was saying kind of like CPR or mouth to mouth. That's a good point. If someone needs help breathing and uh, it's an emergency, we can help use our air to help them breathe. Probably we don't wanna give them too much though. <laughs> All right, amazing questions, my friends. I'm gonna go ahead and, and wave goodbye. Thank you again um, for doing the program with me, for talking about breathing. And I hope that uh, you can all take some deep breaths and have a wonderful rest of your day. See you later, friends.